Hi guys, this is Miss Alexander here, Extra Terrific ET, and today's lesson is going to be how to differentiate using Google Forms. So I noticed there are so many great video lessons that you guys are making and plugging into your Google Form and then asking the students a series of questions, and I just think that is just awesome. So, but today I'm going to show you how to use Google Forms to differentiate. So some of you guys may have noticed the really fun and cool lesson that the administration created, the Harry Potter adventure, where the students were talking about remote learning and using Harry Potter, and it was really engaging, and I'm sure all the students who, who take that adventure are really gonna love it because it's really fun. Um, so what they used is a concept called branching. Now, branching is not a term that Google has coined or that you will find when you're creating your Google Forms, so don't look for a term that says, oh, branch. Um, but it is, a twine, co it is a term that educators have coined using Google Forms because that's exactly what it's doing. It's like branching off into different adventures. So I'm going to show you today how they did branching, how to do branching in your own lesson. It is a great tool to both differentiate. It's a great tool to reteach. It's a great tool. It's just a fun, engaging way that students can use Google Forms to watch content, watch a video lesson you know, answer a question, and if they get it right, they go on. If they get it incorrect, then it takes them to a branch, it branches off and takes them to another area, an opportunity to reteach or maybe explain it again in a different way um, or connect and engage with the students and, and you know, and, and talk to them about where they went wrong and their mistake. Um, so I hope you find this tutorial beneficial, and if you're interested in you know, taking one of your lessons and really leveling up your Google Form game and uh, doing some branching in your lesson, then reach out to me and I'd love to help you. So let's get started. All right, teachers, here I am. I'm already in Google Form. I already have a basic overview um, done for you. And I'm gonna go through each step as opposed to wasting time and starting from scratch and showing you how to build it from each element. I've already got it built and I'm going to show you how you can take a current form you already have and with a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of reteaching um, technique, you can turn your Google form into a differentiated lesson as opposed to just a, a formative or an assessment tool. Okay, so before I start, I just want to tell you sort of how I brainstormed a little bit. Um, what you're seeing right now on the screen is a Jamboard and showing you how in a Google form you have a question, question one, and this is what the branching looks like. You have multiple choice, A, B, or C. A and B is the wrong skill that takes them to review. Um, if they chose question, if they chose answer C, which is the correct answer, it takes them on to question two. Question two then, if you know, obviously question A was the correct answer because it took them on to question three. If they chose B or C, that's the wrong skill, so it actually takes them to review. And same thing with question three. Now, this is a three-step branching activity. I think in elementary school, no more than three steps is all you need. In fact, for today's tutorial, I really just had two questions, two checks for understanding, one reteach lesson, and then a, like an exciting praise video at the end. As you can tell on question three, if they got the answer right, complete. So that's sort of the framework of how branching works. And you can use this model as an example. Um, I totally took this from, you know, uh, Shake It Up Learning and who has awesome, uh, she is, does awesome ed tech videos out there, but this graphic is not my own, but this is the framework for making a branching lesson. You're welcome to use that. The second thing that I'm going to show you in Jamboard is actually something that I put into my Google Form for students to use. Um, it's just a little tool down here where they can make tens and ones because today's lesson is all about double digit addition and regrouping. So I also have this Jamboard that I have put into my Google Form so students can use it as a place to go and use manipulatives. Maybe some of your students have a bag of manipulatives at home. They have a 10 frame, they have cubes. Maybe that's what you want them to use instead. Maybe you have a journal, they a math journal they write in and they're making 10 frames and they're making single cubes themselves. However you wanna, uh, whatever you wanna use, but this was just my example of using a Jamboard. And the third thing I'm gonna show you is my, my thinking about this activity and how I approached it. I am all about the, the prep and the plan so that when I go to execute it, it's exactly what I wanted to do. So there are four parts to this branching activity. I want them to solve this equation. If they get it right, it goes on 
to question two, which is the practice. Um, but if they don't, you know, question two or potentially question three is the reteach. They, uh, before they go on to practice, if they get it correct, they go on to practice. If they need to, you know, redo it, they have, they watch the video on reteaching the act, uh, the lesson, and then they do the problem again. If they got it correct, they go on to practice. If they get practice right, then all right. The fourth step is they did it. I also made a little area here where what is my do outs? Well, I have to create my problems, which I've done. I also have to make my reteach or instructional video, which you maybe could just take a synchronous lesson video clip from the day before. Maybe on, you know, the day before you taught a synchronous lesson and you taught the students using the whiteboard how to do addition with regrouping and you maybe just take that video and edit the clip out where you, you taught them and you use that. So repurpose your material. You don't have to make a brand new video for the reteach. And the only other little piece is I made a short little like you did it exciting congratulation video which goes at the end of the form. Okay, so let's jump into it. All right, so as you can see here, I've got my Google form open, which I know a lot of us know how to make Google forms. So I've got a lot of different sections, which if you don't know how to make the four sections, because you remember in my pre-planning, I had four sections. So this is how you choose it. You choose the sections here. I went ahead and set it up. I've got my title page, addition with regrouping activity. Got a block where they put their name in, their first and last name. Here I've got a section that says use the Jamboard here to help you solve the math problem if you need it. And on this, you know, when they click there, it will, this is an example, they could click the link and it takes them directly to the Jamboard. And what's really cool is, is when you click the link, it automatically forces a copy for the students. So they're not going to be working on the exact same jam Jamboard as every one of their students. It forces a copy by putting this little word copy here at the end of it. The student, it makes them their own little copy of the Jamboard. And this is, you know, this is what it looked like. It made like a little copy of the activity that I was doing. Okay, so then the first one, the first step was to solve, right? So here it is. Solve the math problem with regrouping. And what you need to do is you put your answers, your multiple choice. It only works with multiple choice or drop down. So that's another, you know, branching really only works with multiple choice or drop down. So that's your first thing. Um, I put the answers here. I, I put 912, I put 102, and I put 92. So I started thinking about, you know, my own second grader who's doing double-digit addition, and I started thinking about what type of answers is he going to choose. And if he didn't open up the Jamboard to use the, or use the manipulatives or get out his pencil paper, you know, I could see him easily, you know, adding 7 plus 5 and knowing it's 12 and putting a 12 in there and adding 7 plus 2 and putting a 9. But we know that is incorrect. So, um, and as you can see here, this is the most important step. Right down here at the bottom, you're going to choose go to section based on the answer. So that means whatever the student chooses, it takes them to the section. Okay, so if he chose 912, it's going to go to section two, which is the learning. That's my learning video that I made, right? If he chose 102, yay, he got it right. It's going to take him on to practice more, which is another question um, further down. If he chose 92, that is incorrect as well, so it's going to take him on to section 2 to learn. So let's go on to the next section. So again, make sure you chose go to section based on answer. Now, this is the reteach, okay? This is the reteach section. Learn how to solve. And the reason why I put it in capital letters is so my brain quickly knows I've got the solve, I've got the learn or the reteach, and I've got the practice, and then I have the yay, fun, congratulations, you did it section, my four sections. So here underneath learn, I've got my instructional video. Again, that can be maybe a synchronous lesson that you did the day before that you recorded in Google Meet and you just edited that clip out. It could also be maybe a video you found on YouTube, or it could be a short little instructional video, a reteach video, you know, that you personalize for the students, okay? Again, so I've got my video embedded. I uploaded it to YouTube. I embedded my video. I've also got another link to that Jamboard if the student needs to go back and use the Jamboard manipulatives because maybe that's what I'm using in my synchronous lessons so they're familiar with how to use Jamboard. And then I've got the math problem again. Not only is the math problem the same math problem that's in the teaching video, but it's the one that they got incorrect further up. Okay, so from here, again, I'm going to use branching. So I need to make sure that I chose go to section based on answer. This time, 
Again, if they get the answer wrong, it's going to bring them back again to watch the video. It's going to bring them back again for the opportunity for them to use the Jamboard, the manipulatives, okay? But if they get the answer correct, just like in the first one, they're going to go on to practice more. So this is my practice more section. My practice more is my second math problem that I came up with. Um, it's an opportunity for them to practice double digit addition with regrouping. Again, I have made sure it's go to section based on answer. And on this time, the correct answer is 83. <clears throat> so I have it linking to have fun and congratulations. That's my section four. That is my end of the activity that they got it correct, that I know they did the math. Of course, if they miss it by choosing, you know, 73 or 713, it takes them back to the reteach lesson one more time. Okay, so when they choose the have fun and congratulations, that's my final section. And I made a quick little awesome video. I put on my ears. I made it animated and had fun. Um, my son's even in the background. He saw and heard what I was doing and he wanted to come running over to see what was so exciting. Um, on this one, on this section, I also put a little question. Was this fun? And what did you like about it and, or, or not? So, um, but now this part is important. Instead of choosing... Um, you know, the final one, instead of choosing, you know, you know, go to section based on answer, um, they don't, you don't have to do that. So, you know, you just choose submit form. So that's what I chose on that one. And they're not going to another section. They're going to the end. So when you, when you choose that, oh, let me show you one more time. I'm sorry. Go to section based on answer, continue to next section. I want them to submit the form at this point. Okay. So just remember that at the very end of your activity, you want it to, whatever they choose, gives them the opportunity to submit the form because that's the end of the activity. Hopefully that's not too confusing for you. Now, when you get in there, when all else fails, you can always click the eyeball and go and observe what your activity looks like. So I'm going to show it to you in practice really quickly. My name is Miss A. Let's do the math problem. Maybe I need to open up the Jamboard. I'm going to click on it too because I want, I'm going to make a copy for myself. Okay, starting to make a copy. Okay, here it is here. This is where my workspace to use. I'm going to jump back. Maybe, um, maybe I did some mental math and I solved it, but it wasn't quite sure. And I think the answer is 912. So I'm going to click 912 and I click next. Oh no, I didn't get it correct. So at this point, you might even have, you know, words that say something like, you know, try again or something like that. Um, but this is where the student watches the video and then they have a chance to do it again. And I know the answer is 102 now because I've watched the video. I used the Jamboard manipulatives and I'm going to click next. So it took me to another problem, my, my practice problem. And now that I understand how to do double digit addition with regrouping, I know the correct answer for this is 83. So I'm going to choose 83, click next. And then I have a video telling me, awesome, great job. I did it. Was this fun? Yes, it was awesome. Um, more of this, you know, what did you like or not like? Um, I like the bunny ears in my video, and then you can click submit. Now, I will tell you one thing. If your goal is for this to be an assessment to see what your students know from watching the video or what they gain from it and you just want that sort of a formative assessment, um, then, then that's great. But an activity such as this with branching isn't really looking for the right or wrong answer. It's really an opportunity to differentiate. It's an opportunity to do, you know, an embedded reteaching um, activity. Because when you export the spreadsheet and go to look at it, it's like all jumbled and a lot of mess because the student may take two or three chances to get the correct answer. So you're going to have two or three responses from that same student, you know, trying to get the right answer. So don't get too discouraged when you look at the spreadsheet export and find that there's tons of answers on it. Um, the goal is that it's a teaching activity and it's an opportunity to reteach material for those students who didn't get it and also just a fun and engaging way to use Google Forms. So I hope this made sense. Um, if you need any assistance with making a branching activity in Google Forms or making a cool 
adventure the way the administration made the Harry Potter adventure. I would love to give you some assistance. Um, brainstorm what your your uh, steps out that always is easier when you go to approach making an activity such as this. Um, but I'm here to help you guys and I hope this was informative on how to do branching using Google Forms for differentiation. Bye guys!